Hello, this is the video for 2-4 uh, for algebra. And what we're doing today is compound inequalities. So just to give you an idea of what I, I mean by compound inequalities. Um, if you've ever gone to an amusement park, uh, especially when you were little or you have little brothers and sisters, and you know that many rides have a, a, a height limit or an age limit. And let's say that the height limit for a particular ride is 36 inches. Okay, as long as you are 36 inches, I'm going to color that in because it kind of you can be exactly 36 inches or more, you can ride that ride. Okay, well, let's say it's a little kid ride. Okay, like a, you know, something for a preschool or toddler sized child. Um, adults, those rides are, are not really designed to be large enough to hold an adult for their size, for their height, for their weight, whatever. So there might be a upper end, like if you are 55 inches tall, I'm going to make that number up, um, then you can't go on that ride because you're too big. So then that would be moving in this direction. Okay. Now, I've drawn arrows on these, but are arrows really practical or apply to the situation? So if it starts at 36 and goes upward, but it stops at 55, then we really shouldn't have an arrow here. This one is 55 and down, but once I go past 36, you know, you can't have a newborn on a, you know, a, a kid ride. So it's really not an arrow going down either. So in this case, there wouldn't be any arrows and we would connect them. Okay, that's one possibility. The other possibility is we will be graphing situations where like this. Okay, I'll make one up. Uh, let's say you have an appointment at 3 o'clock. We'll do a timeline instead of a number line. And you don't think you're going to be home from that appointment until 4.30. But you want to spend some time um, playing with a friend. Well, if you have an appointment from three o'clock to four thirty, and you can't, then you can't play with them during that time. But you could hang out before the appointment. Okay, so at three o'clock you should be at the appointment. So I'm not going to color it in. At four thirty, you should be back. So I'll color that in, and you could play after. Okay, so that's the other possibility. All right, possibility is either that the, the variable is either between two numbers or it is on the outside. It's either before or after. Okay, so that's the gist of where this lesson is going. Okay, so shipping is another situation where you can write a compound inequality. I will say that in real life, most of the time when you ship something, you pay by the weight, not by the dollar amount. But uh, there have been companies I've come across before that ship by the dollar amount. So, um, for example, they will ship um, anything, this says anything from one cent up to and including $20, you're going to pay $6.50. If it's more than $20 and up to and including $50, then you're going to pay $9. Okay, so I want you to pay attention to wordings here. Like up to and including. Up to and including. Okay, that I want you to, to see those words and think, okay, it could be equal. All right, not including. That would be not equal. All right, so let's go down and answer some questions down here. What is the least amount a customer can spend on items and pay six fifty for shipping? So six fifty is from one penny up to twenty dollars and including twenty dollars. So the smallest amount, the least amount they can pay is one penny. I'm not sure what you can buy for a penny anymore. Uh, I can't think of anything off the top of my head, but uh, you're going to pay $6.50 to ship it. 
Um, what is the greatest sum amount that a customer can spend on items and pay six fifty? Okay, it includes twenty dollars. So the greatest amount is twenty. What if the sh what is the shipping fee if Sarah spends exactly seventy five? Well, here's why they're asking that because seventy five appears as a value both uh, here and here because it's in the, a border amount. So you have to decide which either eleven dollars or twelve twenty five. It can't be both. Okay. Um, so you have to pay attention to the wording. It says between 50 and 75, and this says from 75 up to. Okay, so if 75 is not between itself and another number, so we can't say it's going to be 11. It says, f this one says from 75, which means or implies that if something is $75, that's the shipping fee you're going to pay. So if she costs, um, if she buys an item that costs exactly $75, Sarah will pay $12.25 because $75 is not between $50 and $75. Okay, we already talked about $650 a lot, so I'm going to skip A. Okay, if you really want to know what it is, I can uncover it. All right. Um, what I'm asking you to do in this section is you know, we're getting to, I want you to be able to write inequalities with greater than signs and less than signs. So I need you to translate the language you see in the chart to the, the same, uh, same meaning, but using the words greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. So we need to change the wording a little bit. So part B. So you will pay $9 in shipping fees if you spend. So instead of saying more than $20, we're going to say greater than $20 and less than or equal to. It said up to and including $50. So we would say less than or equal to $50. Okay, so we're just translating the wording from the chart to using the wordings of greater than or less than. Because then, you know, when we translate that wording, then we can write it as an inequality. You will pay $11 in shipping. It says in words between $50 and $75. So if it's greater than... fifty dollars and less than seventy five dollars let's move down D you will pay twelve twenty five in shipping if it is greater than or equal to $75 and less than, but not including, so I don't say less than or equal to, just less than $100. Okay, I think you get the idea. Okay, so right here, if I was going to pick an important spot to kind of contain a lot of our really important information, it would be right here. Okay, um, these are the two possible compound inequalities that we're going to work with. All right, um, the first one I want you to label as between. Because the main idea here is that all the values that x could be are between the small number and the larger number. Okay, so if I were to graph this, okay, now irregardless, I got to say this, irregardless on your homework of the order the numbers are shown to you. 
you still have to do your number line in the correct order. You still have to have the smallest numbers on the left hand side building up to the larger numbers on the right hand side. Okay, so this says x is greater than 2, but no equal bar, so no circle color in, and it's headed this way, and I'm thinking ahead to this one says x is less than or equal to 7, so color it in, and this is going to be one where I'm coloring between the two dots. And these ones that have the word and, and they're the between ones, have a special compact form, okay? This is the compact form right here. It's a shorter way of writing the same thing as we see in the beginning. Now, you might notice that both my inequality signs are less than, and that might seem confusing to you because shouldn't one of them be greater than and one of them be less than? But I wanna point something out. If I look at x greater than two, and 2 less than x. In fact, I'm going to blow this up so you can see it really big. Okay, if you notice, they are really saying the same thing. It's just that in this second one, it's flipped around so that the 2 comes first and the x comes in the middle. And then the inequality sign also gets flipped over because you can't switch the two in the x without flipping the inequality. Okay, so important. When you're writing a compound inequality, it starts with the small number. The variable is in the middle. The large number is on the end. Both inequality signs are less thans. Then you decide whether there's an equal bar or not. The equal bar depends on the context of the question. You have to read for that, read into the situation. Okay, so the ones that are and, or the ones that are written in compact form have that pattern where the, the two dots connect. Okay, where you draw, you shade in between them. Okay, the other possibility is, you see the word or. And I want you to think about a part. So my two numbers are negative four and two. This is saying x is less than or equal to negative 4 or x is greater than 2. So the arrows, there are arrows in this one and they point apart. Okay, they don't point together, they point apart. How I remember it is the word or makes me think of the other word, or. Like when you're in a boat and you're holding paddles called oars. And when you hold those paddles, they stick out away from the boat to go into the water. Just like those arrows stick, stick out in both directions and pointing apart. Okay, important, the, 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 I'll tell you the homework is gonna mess with you in terms of the order. Okay, the important thing is that the less than is with the small number and the greater than is with the large number. That's the important thing to remember. Also remember there's no compact way of writing this because you can't, or means it can't be, it could be, it can't be both. Can't be both. So there's no compact way of writing it. They will be separate. Okay. Down here at the bottom, uh, it helps if we have the, I'm going to bring this shipping. Okay, 650 in shipping fees. These are all ands. They're all betweens. These are all compact form. So I can start with the small number, variable in the middle, 
larger number on the outside. They always get less thans. So the main thing to remember in writing compound inequalities now is decide whether something gets an equal bar or not. Okay? Um, it could be something could be one cent. So I'm going to put an equal bar. It said including twenty dollars. I'm going to put an equal bar. Nine dollars in shipping fees. That starts at twenty. X in the middle. High point of fifty. Less than less than. Okay. Now equal bar or no equal bar. It says more than twenty. It doesn't say anything about equal. In fact, if it's already equal to twenty in the first one, it can't be equal to twenty in the second one. It does say including fifty, so I will put an equal bar. Okay, between fifty and seventy-five. And part D. Okay, those are the answers. Okay, on your homework, don't forget to do the vocab section. Remember, you get a deduction in homework points when you skip it. So don't forget to do that part. Okay, uh, the example one here is good. All numbers less than or equal to 22 and we can do compact form. Greater than negative 4. In fact, the directions say these are all compact form. Okay. So all numbers less than 55 and greater than 45. Okay, if these are all compact form, guys, I don't care what order they wrote the numbers in the problem. The smaller number, the variable, the larger number, two less thans. Let's see, it says less than 55, so no equal bar. Greater than 45, no equal bar. Okay, so you just have to read to determine if there will be equal bars or not. In the next section, it says write an inequality for each graph. These are all uh, compact inequalities. They're all ands. So smaller number, variable, larger number, less than, less than. Now looking at our dots, that's colored in, I get an equal bar. Six is colored in. I get an equal bar. We still have not going to hit any ors yet. We're still ands. Next it says to graph each inequality. So negative 5 gets a circle but no equal bar. I don't color it in. Positive 5 gets a circle. No equal bar. I don't color it in. It's a compact inequality. We will connect those. Compact inequalities are more common. Now we're going to start getting into some ors. So for the first 19, even though it's the example problem, it says the flowers in the garden are six inches or taller. So x is greater than or equal to 6 or shorter than 3 inches. x is less than 3. Okay, so you could have some that are ors in this situation. You cannot write a compound inequality for an or. People with a driver's license are at least 16 years old and no older than 85. This is one we can say, you know, Common sense, you're between the ages of 16 and 85. You're between the ages of 16 and 85. Two less thans. At least means an equal bar. No older than. It means you could be 85, but just no older than. In this section, we are skipping 26 entirely. We are also skipping 30 entirely. Don't do them. They are, they don't play by the rules. 
where the either they're going to point together or point apart. And there's really no mathematical application for when the dots would not either connect or point apart. So they're, that's kind of silly to me. Okay, 25. I also don't like 25 because it graphs each one of these inequalities separately. Okay, and then this is really all you need, guys. You don't need to write the and ones. You don't have to graph each inequality separately and look for the overlap. Okay, you just need that 2 to 7 connecting. You don't need this part up here. Uh, 27 I kind of dislike because again it goes out of order. We're still going to do it, all right? But I'm not going to put a 5 here and a 3 here because that's not how number lines work, okay? But it's, you know, I don't, you can almost get f tricked by it because it's worded first. You still have to put a smaller numbers on the left and larger numbers on the right. Okay, so let's look at the three part first. It says x is less than three. Circle, no equal bar. X is greater than or equal to five. Circle colored in and greater than. It was an or, so they should be pointing apart anyway. So we're not gonna do 26 and we're not gonna do 30. Now, I'm saving the rest of 2, 4 to do tomorrow. So it says solve each compound inequality from 3 onward. I'm saving those for tomorrow. All right, so if you can get that far tonight, that would be great. And I will see you tomorrow. Have a good day.